This is a case of a 58 years old patient who came to us um, seeking for a penetrating keratoplasty surgery on a perforated cornea after a corneal abscess. The patient stood in uh, the hospital in another city uh, for one month uh, with medical treatment only and the therapeutic um, contact lens. Now, as you see, the eye is perforated and the perforation is closed with the iris. He lost completely the anterior chamber, as you can see in the OCT. We perform penetrating keratoplasty using uh, Moria Trifine and aiming for a bit decentered, inferiorly decentered um, trephination because we wanted to cover completely the area of uh, perforation. The graft is uh, prepared after we measure the diameter of the area which has to be uh, eliminated. We mark the cornea. Now we follow more or less a standard technique for penetrating keratoplasty. We mark the cornea for the future separate sutures. And now we cut and want to eliminate the, the host cornea. But we need to be very uh, careful because um, as you saw on the OCT, on the preoperative done OCT, there is no anterior chamber at all. So the iris is completely uh, stuck to the, to the cornea. So there is no space between the cornea and the iris. We cut the cornea with the cornea scissors with a, paying a lot of attention, slowly, step by step, and taking an extra care, especially in the perforated area of the cornea, where we have some neo vessels which are bleeding. Um, so again, very careful, we don't want to hurts to perforate the iris. And this is a maneuver which we recommend in cases like this uh, with a fine uh, spatula. We, we very gently detached the iris from the cornea and from the cornea hole with gentle and nice and slowly maneuvers. And we managed to do this, as you can see here. Then we continue on the other part of the cornea, again, paying a lot of attention to avoid any iris damage. We also need to avoid the lens damage because it seems that the lens is quite transparent, at least for the moment, and we don't want, we don't have in our intention and in our plan to perform cataract surgery at this stage. But the lens look, uh, looks quite transparent. We protect the lens and the iris with uh, methyl cellulose, with OVD. And now we followed the um, standard uh, um, suture of the graft. One of the problems in this case is that uh, after staying uh, one month without uh, any depth of the anterior chamber, the iris tends to, to come towards the cornea and it's difficult to preserve a quite deep anterior chamber. We tried both with OVD and with air. Now we managed to, to, to keep uh, an anterior chamber with air, but uh, on the OCT next days you will see that um, there are synechia between the iris and uh, uh, the cornea on 360 degrees. So we needed to refill the anterior chamber with OVD and air and uh, the OCT and the anterior um, slit lab examination looked fine the next days. But um, uh, in a few weeks the patient developed cataract which uh, was quite fast developing uh, and turned quickly in a white cataract with the um, fixed pupil and the uh, synechia between the iris and the lens. So we needed to perform cataract surgery two months after the corneal transplant surgery. Because all the sutures are in place, of course we need to pay attention when we enter with the knives uh, for paracentesis and for the main incision in order to avoid the cutting of the sutures. We dye the anterior capsule because we have a white cataract. Uh, we insert uh, viscose to protect uh, the endothelium and uh, underneath the uh, provisc to um, preserve a deep anterior chamber, so soft shell technique. And now with a, a round spatula, we gently detach the synechia, which are quite very strong uh, between the iris and the anterior capsule. And we gently insert the spatula up to the margin of the iris. And you can see uh, how um, important synechia uh, are already formed. Again, we pay attention when we enter with a knife 2.2 millimeter in main incision. And we take out the fibrotic and pigmentary mem membrane, which is formed 
under the iris, especially from the area where the iris was um, uh, coming into the perforated uh, cornea. We die again in order to see better the anterior capsule and because we are dealing with um, intumescent, white intumescent cataract, uh, we performed the CCC, we started at least the CCC with um, cystitome via paracentesis under OVD, which preserves a deep anterior chamber. We use in this uh, case uh, Provisc under this coat and Provisc uh, keeps also the, uh, the cortex uh, more or less uh, in the bag. Um, we don't have very liquefied cortex, so we can continue the, um, the capsulorexis with the uh, capsulorexis uh, forceps, paying attention to avoid its uh, run out. Uh, and look how it, uh, it is uh, covered by a lot of uh, pigment, iris pigment mobilized on the capsule. Hydro dissection and rotation was not uh, difficult, and now we are starting the phaco massification. We are using Centurion machine with uh, uh, balanced tip, and you will see in this video a real time phaco emulsification. Um, I enter with a um, tip uh, in the center of the nucleus, quite deep, and with the Nagahara chopper uh, up to the periphery of the bag equator and cut uh, in a three dimensional movement. Uh, the, the nucleus in several pieces. I'm using only torsional energy and not more than it is necessary. In this case, uh, the maximum was 50. So, um, and especially in cases with corneal transplant or with a low endothelial cell, you aim for uh, the lowest uh, uh, energy, which is efficient uh, for a given nucleus. And this is how I managed to do this with no more than uh, 50 in the 550 uh, vacuum. Again, OVD, so I inject OVD several times. And once I have my nucleus divided in pieces, I'm starting the fragment removal. Trying to preserve the stability of the anterior chamber. And uh, I can do this with the Centurion machine. Also, as you will see, the, the inferior part of the iris, where the iris used to be to block the previously uh, perforation of the cornea, uh, the iris uh, has some uh, stromal atrophies and it's more uh, floppy in the anterior chamber. That part uh, at about six, seven o'clock uh, position. But otherwise, the remaining um, um, iris is very stable. The anterior chamber is very stable. And sometimes I'm using the monomanual technique uh, in order to keep more this stability, to avoid any leakage uh, from the anterior chamber and to keep more this um, anterior chamber stability. As I told you, this is a real-time phacomalsification. I just stay, uh, and the pupil is uh, quite small, I just stay with the tip in the middle of the pupil, in the pupillary plane, the iris plane, and uh, due to these torsional capabilities, the fragments come quite easily in the, in the tip. I implanted um, an IQ IOL via wound uh, assisted technique, 2.2 millimeters. And this is how the eye looked one month post-operatively, with a nice graft, with good IOP and well-centered IOL, with no inflammation and quiet eye. Thank you for watching.